It would appear that much of the internet doesn't really know how Adobe Premiere Pro's video rendering works or how the new Intel optimized super fast rendering option that they added in the April update works and it spawned a whole lot of completely unnecessary Intel versus AMD drama to add on top of what we already have and I find that pretty frustrating so let's try to tackle that and bust some myths in today's video. Tired of hiding behind giant microphones during your live streams or videos? Say hello to the Mod Mic and the XLR Power Converter. This flexible, high-quality microphone attaches to your headphones and gives you the freedom you deserve. The XLR Power Converter makes it work with your existing professional audio setup for even more flexibility. Check it out with the link in the video description. If you were unaware, in the April update for Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018, the 12.1.1 update, they added an option for H.264 encoding to utilize hardware encoding or hardware acceleration to speed up renders within Premiere Pro. Now, I think myself may have been pretty vague about how it works because at the time I didn't have 100% confirmation of what exactly is going on. So I'm partially to blame here. But for the most part, everyone's been talking about this feature as some magic mumbo jumbo and comparing their 8700Ks versus something like the i9s. Well, I found this extremely interesting as someone who has just finally completed his build with an i9-7980XE, an 18-core, 36-thread processor without an integrated GPU, but I also have an 8700K gaming rig. But I found that boring, like that is such a specific um, comparison. Meanwhile, uh, just recently, in July, my buddy over at the Toasty Bros just released a video showcasing that his i5-6500U laptop actually renders faster than his uh, uh, Ryzen 1700X, I believe, desktop production PC. He was really interested in that, and I found that a much more interesting comparison, and that's how I actually showcased in the video I wanted to use that new update, was on my 2013 MacBook, and then on my EVGA gaming laptop. Both would win render really quickly, which is going to be very useful for, you know, show coverage, things like that. The problem... The problem is, no one has addressed what exactly is going on here, so let me do that for you right now. This update is not magic. It is not Intel paying Adobe for better coverage. This is actually Adobe being super late to a feature that has existed for years. Certain Intel processors, especially in laptops, but the, especially in the main non-HEDT platform, which is high-end desktop I don't, I don't know what it stands for, but you know, the super high core count ones, but the main core i3, i5, and i7 processors, they all have a video encoding chip, much like the NVIDIA graphics cards, that enables what's called quick sync video, which is a hardware accelerated video encoding that can be used for a variety of applications. Like four years back, this was showcased a lot at Computex and those, and uh, whatever, the uh, CES and things like that to showcase it used in OBS live streaming as an alternative to save on performance while you're streaming X264 video because it serves that specific folk purpose. It serves H.264 or X264 video encoding fast on the processor, but compared to software encoding, it can be a little bit lower quality if you lower the CPU presets, you know, very similar to how the NVENC NVIDIA encoder works on those cards. That feature has been around for years. That is the big advantage of why Final Cut Pro 10 is so fast to render on MacBooks and why a certain sector of the tech YouTuber scene has, you know, switched to Mac entirely because of those fast renders. But it is very specific and only works on that specific thing. If you have an i7, for example, the 8700K or the 6500U that has the iGPU, but you also have discrete graphics, you get to use the best of both worlds because you're still getting your multi-core CPU that is doing all of the main kind of video rendering work. Rendering and encoding are two different tasks. Your CPU and your GPU are still doing the rendering, which is compositing the scene, adding your layers on top of each other, doing the effects processing, and if you enable CUDA or I guess OpenCL acceleration on your discrete graphics card, that work is still being done as well. This only utilizes when you do a final X2 or H.264 MP4 render, it uses that iGPU to do that compression to the final H.264 file. That is all that's being done here. Otherwise, the, the actual video rendering process is the same on Ryzen and Intel. There's been a whole lot of, well, I, Adobe doesn't use Ryzen to its full potential because otherwise this would exist on AMD. No, as far as I've been able to determine, AMD doesn't have a quick sync 
alternative for Ryzen chips. I do believe they have iGPUs built into them, even though they're not APUs. They do have, some of them I believe have iGPUs in them. Nope, that is incorrect. No Ryzen CPUs have any integrated GPUs at all other than the 2200G, 2400G APUs. So this kind of functionality isn't even really possible at all on base Ryzen. Might be on the APUs though. But they don't have QuickSync. You know, QuickSync is Intel specific, but they don't have a QuickSync alternative. There is no full potential for Ryzen that's not being used because that feature doesn't exist. And again, Intel or Adobe is very late to this. This is something that's been around for a long time and Adobe has been slow to update. Now you can use a third party plugin that's been around for years and years to actually export your videos with the NVENC NVIDIA encoder, which does the exact same thing. Now it's a third party plugin and I have found third party encoding plugins to be a little hit or miss in terms of whether they actually benefit performance because there's a little loop-de-loop -loop it does with sending the data and sometimes it's actually slower for me but I'll try to link it in the description below there's been an NVENC plugin for years where you could use your NVIDIA GPU to do the exact same thing that this feature does so if you have a Ryzen system and an NVIDIA GPU you can potentially still get that benefit but it's not <laughs> there's this whole oh I, Adobe's favoring Intel and while I do believe they have worked with them in certain situations they would also want to work with AMD to establish that or to establish you know higher features and things like that because Adobe is out to sell their software, not to get paid by a specific CPU manufacturer. That doesn't help Adobe. Adobe is helped by having new features and faster features that work for everyone. And so this is just one of them. And eventually if there is some sort of AMD alternative that AMD has to develop and make usable, then Adobe will just loop that into the same option. But here's the thing. If you're not rendering to, H2, to H.264, it doesn't matter at all. And that is where the difference came in for my workflow when it came to, I was like, okay, so my main workstation that I edit on is an i9, but I have an 8700K in my gaming rig. Should I do my final render over there? But not really, because I, if you've seen my previous videos, I use a Cineform workflow where I render out timeline previews so that if there's any rendering hiccups, I don't lose any progress. There's that GPU render error, which is still going to happen if you're using the quick sync encoding. And so rendering the Cineform file, that option isn't there because quick sync encoding is only for H.264. And so rendering my Cineform workflow that I showed off where it's really, really fast renders, since especially since I have a fiber internet connection now that can upload those files in like 20 minutes, my i9 still beats the 8700K and definitely would beat a laptop. And the big thing, which I had an entire video plan to address Gamers Nexus and Hardware Connects, talk about switching from an i9 or whatever to an 8600, I believe, or 8500 or something weird for the Hardware Connects team. And when Gamers Nexus was choosing which CPUs they would use, was none of them addressed timeline performance. And this is what drives me nuts, and I've ranted before about Final Cut versus Premiere in terms of everyone focuses on render times, which to me is absurd and ridiculous. But this new setting doesn't help you with timeline performance. And the Toasty Bros video that I was that I referenced addresses that sort of, you know, they actually address that as if you have a laptop that renders faster than your desktop, the laptop, especially without a discrete GPU, is still going to be a much, much worse video editing experience than your desktop. Your, you know, your multi-core Ryzen even, 1700X or whatever, is still going to perform way better than a little laptop CPU or if you know if you already have a workflow and you're like why didn't they give this to AMD because they couldn't but your your actual timeline editing experience your actual editing performance which is most important in my opinion is completely unaffected by this because that's not how it works it is purely a final encoding acceleration and so it is still much more advantageous for anyone to use a high multi-core you know, fast processor over something with an iGPU and a discrete GPU instead of an iGPU because editing on an iGPU mobile CPU or even just purely on an iGPU, like if you just said, okay, I don't need a 1060 or 1070 or whatever in my editing PC anymore because of that acceleration, your timeline performance, your editing experience is going to suffer greatly. And again, Ryzen's going to be mostly on par with the Intel systems in that regard. Now there is some I mean, Hardware Connect specifically switched from Ryzen back to Intel because they've had issues with Adobe and things like that. And that comes down to AMD's driver optimizations and how they handle certain things with multi-threading. This has been an issue for AMD for a very long time. Ryzen is no different. Like, this is just what happens. 
once they get driver optimization a little better, a little bit more cooperative, a lot of it actually comes down to operating system. Windows 10 18.03 does not get along with certain AMD chips. Like there's there's a lot going on here. It is not Adobe just being paid too much by Intel to purely focus on Intel. That's not how it works. And a big thing when it comes to actually, if you're cons trying, if you're digging through this mud of misinformation and discussion about these topics, trying to determine what you should build your editing rig with, you should also consider PCIe lanes. I am obviously, obviously I, I am doing sponsored videos for Intel. There's going to be one this week. There's been one for the past two weeks with regards to gaming PCs. And I do still firmly believe that, you know, the Intel i7 line is still great for gaming PCs. But if you need PCIe lanes, something like the Gamers Nexus or the Hardware Connects comparison of an i9 with 44 PCIe lanes compared to an 8700K with only 16, it doesn't make sense to say this renders faster, so I'm going to go with the less PCIe lanes. If you're doing anything with your PC, capture cards, 10 gigabit network interfaces, NVMe storage drives, uh, <laughs> they're hardware accelerated multi GPUs, TV tuner cards, like anything, extra USB ports, Thunderbolt 3 cards, anything that you need to add into a PCIe slot, which most high-end production rigs will need. You don't just edit with just a basic, S like, especially a channel of that size. Are they really not using any extra hardware? That doesn't make sense. You want more PCIe, la PCIe lanes. And in many cases, honestly, that is Ryzen. That is not Intel. And so you want that over a slightly faster H.264 render, especially when there are plenty of workflow optimizations you can make if you weren't too lazy. Not that I'm saying you, the specific viewer, are lazy, but these comparisons are lazy. It doesn't make sense. So hopefully I've helped clear the air a little bit here, and uh, hopefully I can help address some of the concerns that I had great concerns with regards to the Hardware Connects and the Gamers Nexus video about this hardware accelerated encoding, as it is not what people think it is. It is Intel Quick Sync Video, a feature specific to in certain Intel chips, which has been around for years. Adobe is finally updating a feature that other software have supported for years, and AMD doesn't have an alternative to. That is it. And it's only for H.264 final encoding, doesn't help timeline performance. Honestly, it's something that it's nice to have if you happen to have that CPU. Like every once in a while, I'm doing editing on my gaming PC because I'm already doing stuff. We already have like too much going on my main rig. And so rendering that out with that encoding, nice little benefit. When I'm on the road and rendering on my MacBook or my gaming laptop with a 7700U or something and a GTX 1060, that will be nice to benefit from. Otherwise, it's not worth worrying about and not worth all this extra Intel versus AMD nonsense. Like, don't polarize yourself over misinformation, please. And plus, again, there is a plugin for Invink if you want to tr give that a go. I'll have it linked in the video description. I have links to all of the other videos that I'm referencing as well in the video description. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more awesome tech content and deep dives into topics like this. I really want to help clear out misinformation when it comes out, and I get really frustrated when bigger channels just get lazy about how they convey the information. Like, Ugh, it, just, it really frustrates me. So, comment, like, subscribe, turn on notifications if you don't want to miss a video. I'm Vox. I'll see you next time.